I'm Blake Rudis here with Everyday HDR and HDRinsider.com. And today I want to talk about this dehaze slider. Now I'm not going to show you just how to use it because that's ridiculous. There's already many tutorials out there on how to use the dehaze slider. I'm going to show you why you want to use it at the beginning of your workflow. We're even going to debunk some of these crazy myths that surround this dehaze thing and show that it's actually a lot more powerful than you actually think. And we're also going to show how we use it at our end of our workflow with something like this to actually haze a photograph. And I'm not talking about the uh, fraternity style here. We're talking Photoshop style. All right, so the first thing I want to talk about with this dehaze slider is not necessarily how to use it because there are so many tutorials out there now on how to use this thing. What I want to try to do is really dig in there and see what the heck this dehaze thing does. And the reason why is because when dehaze first came out for Lightroom and someone was telling me to try and get on the Lightroom uh, board and the HDR Insider group, uh, I just kind of laughed and said, I don't, I don't need another contrast slider because here I was just assuming that dehaze was just another form of contrast. But in actuality, when we look at an image like this that actually does have a slight haze to it, this was taken from my DJI Phantom 3 at about 400 feet up just after a storm. I think that's, this actually probably might have been around 300 feet knowing the location that I'm at. About 300 feet up just after a storm, there's still some haze kind of in the air from the steam rising off as the, uh, as the sun is beating down on it. So is it a great photo to use for this? Yes, for two reasons. One, it was a hazy picture. And two, there's a lot of noise in it because it was with the Phantom 3 and it does tend to be a pretty noisy uh, image quality. So with that being said, let's actually jump into this dehaze slider. Um, I think it needs to be renamed number one uh, because uh, it dehazes and rehazes. So maybe it should just be called haze so that you can dehaze or rehaze. Either way, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into this uh, the effects panel here. So if you're using Photoshop, you'll find dehaze in Adobe Camera Raw in the effects area. You won't find it in Photoshop itself, which is actually kind of a shame. You know, I joke about this dehaze thing because I think it's actually kind of funny, but in reality, it does a lot of really awesome stuff and you're gonna see that here. So in this effects area, you're gonna go ahead and just jack this all the way up. I wanna see this at full on 100 so that we can try and decode exactly what this is doing. So as I bring this up and I, I look at this, I slowly see how dehaze is adapting to the photo and it does it in different ways. If you want to add haze, you can move it to the left, which is actually a really cool effect. And we'll get into that in part two of this tutorial. So I'm going to jack this all the way up to plus 100. And now I'm going to go over here to the copy of this image and I'm going to try and replicate this as if I did not own the dehaze slider. So when I was joking, I said that this was just a contrast slider, just just hike up the contrast all the way. Well, let's look at the difference. It's clearly not just a contrast slider. You can see that there's a, a lot more um, saturation or vibrance happening in the colors. So let's actually look at another area of this. There's also a lot of detail in the clouds and in the sky here that I can see I don't have resurrected here. So another form of contrast is going to be clarity. So I'll jack that clarity all the way up, see what happens. As I said before, there's a certain element of vibrance here that's not coming along with that second contrast slider that we would find in some of that clarity. So let me go ahead and move the vibrance up and see if that works. When we do that, let's look particularly at these trees. When we look particularly at those trees, these have a nice, still subtle type of look to them as if we just saw the image for the first time. But when we look at this, it's very contrasty, over contrasty. So it looks as if the dehaze adjustment is actually not just dehazing our photo by adding more contrast. It's really compartmentalizing very individual aspects of this image, keeping certain things the way they should be and revamping other things and making them brighter. It's kind of like when Vibrance first came out. When Vibrance first came out, people were like, ooh, Vibrance, let's just move this up. Who knows what Vibrance is? Well, as we've come to realize, Vibrance is a very powerful adjustment, uh, especially Vibrance within Photoshop, because you can use Vibrance to adjust the colors without oversaturating your image. Very much the same that you can do in Adobe Camera Raw. So let's bring the Vibrance down, and let's look at maybe other areas where this adjustment is coming in. So when I look here, let's look at the highlights. The highlights here look almost HDR-ish. So let's drop those highlights to negative 100 and let's increase our shadows to plus 100. 
So now we're getting pretty close to what D. Hayes is doing, but we're not quite there. Let's try the whites maybe, bring those whites down. That gets pretty close. And let's look back here. Okay, so we're pretty close by moving the whites down, but we're still not quite there. And one thing that I really want to point out is I'm going to zoom in right here to about 200%. Actually, let's go 300%. And I'm going to go back to this one and I'm going to zoom in right here at about 300%. So you're seeing here, this is the dehaze adjustment at 300%. This is what we tried to do at 300%. So not only is there a little bit of clarity happening here, there's a little bit of everything. There's clarity, there's contrast, there's highlights, there's shadows, there's some whites, there's some vibrance. There's also noise reduction because this is a very noisy version. Whereas this one, as we move that dehaze up, it still kept our noise at bay and kind of push that back a little bit too. So our noise isn't quite as vibrant. So let's go ahead and fit this back in view, fit this back in view. Now I wouldn't suggest jacking the DHA slider all the way up to plus 100. What I'm really trying to do here is just show you that there's more to this DHA slider than just the simple stroke of a contrast adjustment. And that's why if I was using dehaze, uh, there's two ways that I would use dehaze. Number one is just like you're seeing here, using dehaze as uh, the preliminary step. One of the first things I do as I'm adjusting my image, either give that image haze or take some of that haze away. That's the one of the first things I would do with the photograph if I was going to use dehaze. Just like you're seeing here, this actually does improve this photo a little bit. If we don't take it all the way up to plus 100, we bring that up, we get some more saturation, some more vibrance in our clouds. We also get that nice highlight adjustment with the noise reduction. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that's going on in this dehaze slider that is more than meets the eye. It's like a D Decepticon or an Autobot. All right, taking you back, taking you back to the day when I knew Transformers. So now in the second part of this, I want to show you how I would use it afterwards. So this is before we now know what dehaze does. It does a lot of crazy stuff. It does contrast. It does uh, clarity. It does vibrance. It does highlights. It does shadows. It does some whites. It does some blacks. And if we look at this, it even does some temperature control. And I'll show you that when we get into part two, you see the temperature is different in these two images as I tried to increase that and make it appear that way. Uh, one of the things I might have to do is even increase some of the set, the temperature here to make it a little bit warmer to match the, the warmth in these clouds. But if you look at it, it's maintaining the blue in the sky. So there's a lot going on in this dehaze thing. Let's go ahead and jump into part two of this and I'll show you how I use it afterwards and we'll really look at that color temperature a little bit more. All right, so here is a photograph that I've already run the digital zone system on, the color zone system on. I've done some sharpening. A lot of the tools that I would normally use on a photograph to try and make it look better. Um, and it does look pretty good now. The contrast is right. I like the colors. I like everything that's kind of going on with this, but it didn't match my vision when I was in that forest. And one of the main reasons why is because there's so much chaos here that it's hard to focus on what the focal point is in the forest. Oftentimes when we shoot in a forest, it is very difficult to uh, really get the viewer to accept what it is that we're trying to make them see because there's a lot of chaos happening in a forest. So that's what I'm going to show how to use the dehaze slider here. And the thing about this is that this is where I really wish that dehaze was either A, a brush that I could use, or B, an adjustment to put in Photoshop uh, in the adjustment area and the adjustment down here, a little adjustment layer action, dehaze, maybe just call it regular haze, a little bit of research and development for you, uh, Adobe. So I know that you just started this, but hey, you know, you can always improve on it. I'm all about continuous improvement. So what I'm going to do is press Command or Control J, and I'm going to use the shortcut for Adobe Camera Raw in Photoshop CC. Control Shift A. That's going to bring me into Adobe Camera Raw. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right over this effect slider, just bring that dehaze up and see what happens. It makes it more confusing, right? I mean, it just really just gives us more contrast. Now, this is not nearly uh, as bad as it was in the first image that we showed. So you can see that this dehaze is, is more of an analytical tool. Uh, it analyzes the image, sees what it might need, and it gives it to it based on light. Uh, it's really interesting how it works. I, I really wish I could get the inner workings on this. So what I'm going to do is actually bring this all the way down. And I want to actually give this image some haze. 
And when I look at this, when I, I told you before that dehaze even does some temperature stuff, look at how much cooler my photo is now that we've added that haze. So let's go back over to the, the basic panel, increase this and give it some warmth again. And as I increase that warmth, it's getting a little pinkish in there as well. So I'm going to give it some green to kind of match that environment. And if I'm feeling a little frosty here, I'll actually increase the highlights a little bit too, to give this a little bit of a glow in those hazy areas and I'll go ahead and press okay. So now I've got more of what my vision looked like. My initial vision was this tree stump and just really kind of singling on this tree stump and this path over here. So now I can actually do that with, with a mask. I can use this mask to paint in the areas that I do not want to have the haze on it. So I'll just go ahead and paint in black. Anyone who's familiar with masking knows that uh, black will push something back or make it disappear. So just this tree stump here, what I can do here that actually kind of helps is right, uh, the, right next to the right bracket key, the forward slash key, I can go ahead and make a little quick mask here so I can see exactly what I'm masking in red, which is actually very helpful when I'm doing uh, masking work like this. Mask out this tree stump here like this and just keep going maybe make my brush size smaller by pressing the left bracket key all these hotkeys definitely help as you're going through with photoshop if you don't know the hotkeys uh, get some hotkey action here and then we're going to go ahead and block out some of this area down here and kind of make everything along that same kind of contrast plane as this tree and go all the way over to maybe right about here and then we can even drop our brush a little bit and go along the path because that's one of those areas that i did say that i wanted to kind of resurrect here and now if we press that uh, forward slash key, you can see that we've got a nice hazy background. And it really does help to push all that chaos back and allow me to bring my image forward. Now it might be a little too much. So what I would suggest is actually go into this mask and go into the density and maybe change this to about 90% on the density so that it does kind of get that nice kind of cool uh, feeling of the rest of the mist kind of happening in the background there and it doesn't completely allow that to come forward now this coupled with some dodging and burning i could really pull this image forward or maybe even color grade it a little bit by doing maybe some sepia tone type of action change this over to color drop this down the opacity down to about 20 percent or so and we've got ourselves a nice hazy photo that allows us to push back all that chaos and bring something forward. And this is where I really wish that dehaze was some type of brush or maybe an adjustment layer that I can control a little bit easier in Photoshop without having to jump into Adobe Camera Raw. So think about that one, Adobe. You've done a great job with it though. I think the dehaze slider, all jokes aside, it's not just the contrast slider now. There's a lot involved with this dehaze thing and I think they're really onto something here. Just another couple pushes forward and it'll be, it'll be uh, right there where we need it to be. If it's especially if it's an adjustment layer. That's just my two cents. So let's do a little recap and review on the dehaze slider. We found out that dehaze in the very beginning of everything can be a very powerful tool because you can resurrect some areas of your photo. It's a very analytical tool that analyzes your photo to ensure that either A, your photo does need haze or B, could uh, use some dehazing. Now we saw in the first photo that it definitely could have used some uh, dehaze action on it. Uh, but this photo, didn't really help on the dehaze side, but it helped on the rehaze side. All right. Interesting how that works. And then we also looked at it, how you can use it afterwards. And there's applications afterwards where you're done with your whole workflow, but you're trying to give it some creative effect and how that uh, dehaze slider can come in and actually add some haze to push some of the chaos of a forest scene back. Uh, it would have been, it would have taken a lot of steps to do this in the past. A lot of steps to get this accurate of a haze in this photo before. If you saw all the stuff that we did in the first photo and imagine all the sliders we would have to push and pull to maintain the, the uh, amount of realism that's in this photo now, it would have been uh, pretty difficult. So my name is Blake Rudis with Everyday HDR and HDRinsider.com. If you like this, please share it, uh, like it, uh, comment on it, send it to a friend and subscribe because every Friday I'm putting out a new tutorial on my YouTube channel and on everyday HDR. And if you subscribe on YouTube, you get that email right in your inbox. If you subscribe on my website, you get that email in your inbox and you'll never miss a beat on what I've got going on. Thank you very much for watching.